Hello, everybody. I am uh, I'm glad to be here and thank you all for being here attending this uh, appointment that comes at the very end of a, a very busy week of virtual networking full of trend seminars, innovation talks and other, other uh, virtual events within the context of this, uh, of this platform that is a new point of view. This digital fair that has been designed especially to accompany the physical show. So I hope you all enjoyed the, the events of the last week and that we will have the opportunity to enjoy the future events that will last till uh, August the 7th and get finally ready to, uh, to attend uh, uh, the physical event uh, in Milan in September the 22nd and the 23rd. So now let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Maurizia Contu. I have been working for the last 17 years uh, at the economic department of, uh, of UNICH, the Italian Times Association. And I am uh, glad to, be, to have by my side, although also only virtually, <laughs> Mr. Gustavo Gonzalez Quijano, Secretary General of Cotans. Gustavo, if you want to, to say some, some words to yeah, introduce you yourself. Much. Thank you, thank you, Mauricia. I'm very happy to be with you uh, today. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, older and longer in this industry than Mauricia. It's a kind of uh, mode, uh, the beauty and the beast. Uh, you can discover who is the beauty and who is the beast. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, webinar on terminology. Welcome. Okay, so... The subject of the webinar of today is leather terminology, which is uh, quite a technical subject, uh, very important for the sector, very important for the market and for consumer. So this is really a subject that has to, has to do with the, the issue, the very important issue of transparency and correct information in the market. So let's start. Gustavo, you want to, to, to open the floor with this uh, very important discussion? description of our beautiful material that is leather. <laughs> okay, I'll do that slide. That's perfect. Well, leather is, uh, is probably one of the most, uh, the, the oldest uh, um, um, product that uh, mankind has developed. And it is the, the result of, um, of um, valorizing the residues of, uh, of um, hunting. Uh, you hunt animals for meat and then you have a residue, which is the hide or skin, which is uh, by chance was uh, probably discovered how to be uh, rendered input receivable, how to be rendered that it does not drop. And that's leather. Uh, with the time and of course over, over, the, over the, the centuries, uh, man has become very uh, efficient in, in using this raw material, using this resource from nature and transforming it into leather. Uh, not only for uh, well for a number of things uh, from for from that, that go from that are basically in the area of culture uh, so it's uh, that it's used for i don't know religious uh, ceremonies in, in in the ancient times but then it has been passed on also to our everyday life and has become indispensable for shoes for clothing for furniture for a number of things so it's the byproduct of the production of meat, and it is, uh, of course, designed for um, making life uh, of people much more nicer and much more uh, agreeable than, than without it. And a very important concept there is that a natural product can comes from a renewable source. So this is really the very, uh, the very intrinsic nature of, uh, of leather. But we have also some more, now we go more into the technicality. So uh, leather is technically described as the hides or skin of an animal that keeps uh, its original fibrous structure more or less intact and that it is tanned to become rot proof. So to become a durable product to be implied in, in, in production of, uh, of uh, lead articles. And the fact that it has this particular uh, structure, this particular fibrous structure, which is unique, um, it has 
extraordinary properties such as flexibility, the adaptability of dif uh, to, to different shapes, the resistance that gives uh, leather the, uh, the, the, the extraordinary property of being uh, the, the product, uh, uh, the unique product that has, uh, that has been implied in uh, several, uh, several articles. Uh, it is a natural product, a live product, so it is one of the on one of the extraordinary properties is the breathability and the capacity of uh, of uh, become uh, a protection from uh, from uh, from uh, the, the the temperature and finally it is a durable product because uh, it, it has been treated in this way uh, with a specific uh, industrial process it's like a second skin it's like a second skin because it's originally, it was the skin of a live animal. So uh, all these uh, descriptions are confirmed and are, uh, and are uh, you know, accepted by, uh, by technical definition of the standard institutes. We have the international standard, the ISO 15115, Five, and the European standard 15987 that confirms this, this description. So the hydro skin that keeps intact its original fiber structure, which is the first property that has to, that, that defines uh, leather. Uh, it, has also, it, is also, uh, it is also more specific when you, uh, when you speak of coatings. Uh, if you have any coating on leather, it, is, uh, um, it, is, it has not to be thicker than 0 0.15 millimeters, so that the natural material has to be preponderant in the, in the, in the, in the final product. And as a consequence, if the the tanned hide or skin is disintegrated mechanically, so the fiber structure is destroyed, it is not leather anymore. So it is a derived from leather, but it is not leather anymore. And of course, uh, obvious thing, the material shall be of animal origin. So it has to be authentic animal origin product. Hold on a, a little, uh, Maurizia. This is very important. Um, it is, uh, it is true, the, the, the definitions that you read here are actually taken from the International Council of Tanners. It's the, the, the governance body of the leather industry at the international level. And uh, um, this definition dates back to 1978. That is uh, uh, when in Buenos Aires, the leather industry con congregated to define what is leather and to integrate this definition in what is uh, uh, what has become then the International Leather Glossary, which is a very important uh, uh, document that is in use in the in the industry. Um, it's uh, it's important also to mention that although this is a this definition dates back to 1978, to the that last year the industry in a new governance structure, the ICT, got, that brings together the International Council of Tanners. The International Council of Hides, Skins, and Leather Traders Associations, which is the body that uh, provides the raw materials, and also the International Union of uh, uh, Leather Technologists and, and Scientists Societies (IULTCS) have agreed within the governance structure that this uh, definition ought to be uh, complemented with the fact, the last thing that you have mentioned, that the material shall be of animal origin. And so this, this definition that dates back to, of, uh, to 1978 will have a new component, which is hide or skin exclusively of animal origin uh, with its original fibril, fibril structure, blah, blah, blah. So that is, that is a new element that comes in in 2019. And you see that the leather industry does not stop to develop and improve uh, its uh, vocabulary uh, in order to, to be up to date. Yeah, that's very important. That the leather industry does not stop to improve the vocabulary, and that's exactly why we are here talking about leather terminology because there are important, uh, important updates uh, to come. So, uh, again, talking about uh, some some definitions that, that dates back to to some years ago. In Europe, there is also an normalized legislation, which is probably something that, uh, that many of us know, that the European directive uh, uh, regarding the mandatory food for labeling, 
as you can see here, there is the, 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 the I reported the pictogram of the, of the label that every, every pair of shoes sold in the European market have, have, to, have to, to report that describes the composition of the three different parts of the shoes, the upper, the lining, and the, the outer sole. In defining the composition of those important parts of the, of the, of the shoes, um, the legislator defined the materials that can compose those parts and one of the material of course that composes those parts which is very important for the for the uh, for the footwear uh, industry is uh, uh, exactly leather that again one, once again uh, is defined uh, as we have uh, already seen so the two main characteristics are the fiber structure, which uh, has to remain more or less intact, and uh, the fact that it is of animal origin. Here you, we have uh, uh, some technical specifics so that the coverage uh, has not to be thicker, uh, as I said, 0 0.15 millimeters. Um, the, the, the leather can be split before or after tanning, and it is uh, always leather. And, uh, we have uh, we introduce uh, another another um, technical uh, terminology which is the full grain ladder where the grain of the ladder remains intact and it's not removed by any any chemical or mechanical process uh, in during the industrial uh, uh, during the industrial uh, yeah process so this is a, this is really a, a very technical definition, but as we can see, all the definitions have uh, the treats in common. And then we have uh, another important directive, uh, which does not define exactly leather, but sets very important rules for the transparency in the European market. Gustavo, would you like to, to illustrate this, uh, this legislation? Of course, of course, that's, uh, well, uh, well, being uh, based in Brussels and being very close to the European institutions, um, well, I, I, I have, uh, we deal with, uh, with, with these type of things and with this uh, legislation. The Unfair Commercial Practices Directive is a very important tool uh, for um, governing one of the most important markets uh, uh, in the world. And, uh, of course, if it is a very important market, the European Union is a very important market. It is also a very important market for leather and leather products and therefore it is important also to know what is the relation between the Unfair Commercial Practices Directive and marketing products on the European market. And um, well, here it is, uh, uh, you, you can read uh, the, what the definition uh, of the uh, directive with regard to misleading actions. And uh, what is very important is that, that the the important thing is that the consumer should not be materially misled uh, in in its in his um, uh, purchasing decisions. So it is uh, it's it's very important that uh, the consumer has the correct information uh, for making a transactional purchase, a transactional uh, uh, um, decision, and uh, to um, to have this uh, information with regard to the to the composition of the products and that is here a very important element for us because of course very often uh, there are uh, a number of products that are on the market that claim to be leather without being leather and that is an unfair commercial practice. This is why in 2016 the European uh, Commission has uh, um, made a guidance document in order to for the uh, this uh, piece of legislation to be harmonically applied uh, in all over Europe. And um, what's very interesting about of being explaining in detail how the directive works and what needs to be understood by, by a consumer, uh, the average consumer, or, or the, the uh, terms like transactional uh, decision or misleading action, etc. All these elements, uh, it is very important also that uh, there are some examples that have been highlighted, like uh, eco leather um, or textile leather that are clearly identified as misleading uh, um, uh, commercial practices or unfair commercial practices because of, of their being misleading if they are applied to a product that is not leather. 
That's the case uh, for eco leather if it is not leather, and that's the case for textile leather, which is a, a contradiction in terms, an oxymoron, because uh, either it is textile or is it leather. That's it. That's it. And it is a very important development uh, in terms of, uh, of consumer protection, I think. Absolutely. But there is not only the European legislation in harmonized terms. This is the, the, the new update in terms of legislation in Europe as regards the, uh, the single initiatives of member states. Uh, in Italy, uh, it is really, really recent, the publication uh, in the official gazette of this uh, new legislative decree, number 68, that contains new provisions on the use of the letter terms, of the terms letter, hide and fur, and their synonyms. And these definitions are all in accordance to the definition that we have already uh, seen before. So the EU legislation, because it cannot be differently, of course, and with the industry, industry technical standards. But it states also some important uh, principles. Uh, it says clearly that it is forbidden to use the terms uh, that are object of the, of the decree if they do not comply with those definitions. So if they are not of animal origin and if they are not defined as we have already mentioned. Moreover, it gives some provisions for labeling and marking the letter articles and the materials if they uh, are indicated and described using those terms. So if the term is used to define, to, uh, to advertise a product, so by any means of presentation also, including the online uh, websites, the online, uh, the online commerce, uh, also in other languages than in Italian, they have to uh, comply with the definition, with the, the, the regulation. And this is to provide correct information to, uh, to the consumer. So the final uh, aim of all those uh, uh, legislation, let's say, is the consumer protection, is transparency in the market. But there are, only also, uh, there are also other initiatives in other countries. As you can see, uh, they, are, uh, um, they are different uh, typology of initiatives. There are leather terminology laws there in Belgium, in France, in Spain, and also in Brazil. And they are quite similar to the uh, Italian legislative decree. Um, there are also legislation as regards labeling of leather clothes in countries like Austria and Lithuania. And there are uh, other voluntary standards in single member states uh, in the European Union, such as uh, in the UK and in Germany. Yes, Mauricia, but uh, maybe uh, we are going to, to, to lose uh, the UK. Not maybe, for sure, because they have decided to leave the European Union. So. Uh, as of uh, uh, a certain point in time, we will have uh, uh, um, a partner uh, in in Europe with uh, with also voluntary standards uh, in the in the arsenal of uh, of standards, which is the UK. But um, I'd like to to mention uh, as well some some things about the the German standards because you know that uh, all these bodies that are within SEN have to apply automatically. The, the, standard, the harmonized standards, the, the standards that are adopted at, at European level. Uh, so there is, it's obligatory, it's mandatory for all the, these national uh, standardization bodies. But there is a, a different set of standards in Germany, which are called the, the RAL standards, uh, which are industry standards, or industry protocols actually, specifications for products, which are uh, a secondary set of standards, which is very important because they are also taken into consideration in court rulings uh, when it comes to decide whether a product, what a product is or whether there is a, an uncertainty about the composition of any product. And that's, that's the RAL. And there are two, uh, two very important uh, RAL standards in Germany, which is RAL 060, I took note of them, 060A2, which is uh, the description of, the, 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 of letter and what are the letter terms and the RAL 061A1, which is specifically concerned with uh, um, uh, furniture leather. 
Uh, these are very important uh, stand in industrial standards, if you want, um, who are also very, very important to, know, to be known for people who are selling in the, Europe, in the German market in particular. On top of that, uh, I would say that uh, um, there is, a, Maurizio has been speaking about the European uh, uh, Football Labeling Directive. And uh, the European Football Labeling Directive has been copied and emulated by a number of countries. So you will find a similar set of rules or labeling footwear uh, in Colombia, in uh, Mercosur, uh, in, uh, in, other, in other countries that have exactly the same type of symbols and the same type of, uh, of legislation. Um, sometimes they have even expanded on that and they have included not only footwear but also leather goods. That's the case, for instance, in, in Colombia, I think, or in Peru. Um, but apart of that, uh, the legislation concerning the label, labeling of, of leather products uh, is more than what we see, what we can identify here uh, uh, in the world. There are also some two other um, European standards that I would like to mention here. Uh, which are um, very useful for, uh, they have, they, they bring a kind of specification or guidance on how to label products in accordance or in compliance with the European rules and uh, uh, providing the consumer with correct information. And these are um, European standards, EN standards, uh, 16223, which is uh, a standard that explains how uh, to uh, label uh, furniture and automotive interiors with leather, furniture and leather automotive interiors, which is a very good guidance because it, uh, it applies the 80% rule that is also applied for textile products or for the football labeling directive. And then there is another interesting standard that is very useful for all those of, of you who are maybe um, putting some leather trims in textile products. Uh, leather trims can be, I don't know, some patches in the, in, in, on the elbows or some leather uh, buttons or whatever applications that you, you, do, you, may, you may use for uh, leather trims. It's, it, it needs to be a textile product. That means a product that is 80% composed of textiles. But in this case, uh, the EN 16483 is a, um, a standard that provides extraordinary uh, good guidance in order to implement these Article 12 of uh, the uh, Textile Labeling Regulation, which says that uh, there should be a mention that says that uh, contains non-textile parts of animal origin. And yes. That is a very important point in order uh, to provide not a, a men simply a mention, but a valorizing information to the consumers saying where leather is and uh, um, what, lead, what type of leather it is and uh, um, uh, yes, and providing this information as a valorizing element of the clothing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, there is also uh, an, important, uh, an important tool for, uh, for uh, guiding the, the consumer in the United States market, which is the leather guides. And it is uh, similar to the uh, European initiatives on uh, unfair commercial practices. And exactly as in Europe, it, 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 is, um, uh, it forbids to, be, to misrepresent or to use deceptive uh, uh, descriptions uh, when it comes to leather, so it is uh, it is forbidden to use the unqualified term leather or other terms suggestive of the of, of the material of leather material to describe uh, articles unless they are made uh, for the most part of of leather. So and and moreover, it is mandatory to uh, to indicate clearly when uh, imitations of leather are used in the composition of the of the articles, and that's uh, and that's quite uh, uh, and that's quite a protection for for the consumer. Well. 
uh, why uh, it's so important uh, uh, the the definition uh, now we we will see how the definition have to do with the, with the consumer protection and with the communication in the market because the market uh, see a wide range of other materials other than leather uh, here I have synthesized the main categories of those materials. We have uh, synthetic fibers, which are basically made from, uh, from petroleum, which is a non-renewable resource and, and very intensive in terms of, uh, of process. Um, and this is, uh, for example, the, the case of, uh, of all the textile uh, covered with polyurethane. Um, there is a second category of uh, plant-based materials, which are made from agricultural byproducts or waste, uh, but that use a huge amount of, uh, of synthetic binding agents to become a material that uh, is, uh, is uh, practical to, to, to be implied in industrial uh, process. And this is the case of all the fibers made by pineapple, wine, cactus leaf, mushrooms, apple, and all those, uh, all those uh, natural uh, elements. And then there is also the category of leather-derived materials. We have introduced this category when we, we described the definition of leather. This is the case of, of the fiber, of the disintegrated leather fibers that are, uh, that are uh, binded with, with some, uh, some agents to become uh, the so-called bonded of, or regenerated leather fibers. That is uh, really a, a, a cousin, let's say, of, of leather, we can say, but it is not leather and it cannot be called leather. But it's, uh, it's interesting to say that uh, these, this last category mm -hmm. is uh, um, a, a, a way where um, Leather can be recycled, uh, so yeah. you, uh, it's a it's an end of waste uh, um, um, operation where uh, not leather that is too small, too short, too, too not, not cannot be used in in normal leather production processes or leather manufacturing processes. Uh, you can still have a, a use if you shred it into and bring it into fibers and bind it with a with a binder and make some sheets. That's uh, that's uh, the beauty about leather that you can use all it, it material uh, and uh, it's still it's very still useful yes it is, it's part of this of its durability characteristic okay. well as we as we have uh, as we have already anticipated there is a, an issue in terms of uh, of definition and of a communication of all those uh, on the, of all those descriptions of materials, um, we we uh, have uh, seen and we are seeing every day the terminology that is changing and developing new expressions. Uh, I mentioned I I just mentioned the the the, the most uh, probably the most used eco ladder to describe uh, an alternative. Uh, which is the idea that we want to suggest here is that is eco-friendly because it is alternative or for example vegan leather it is sustainable because it is alternative to a product uh, derived from animals well uh, the idea of sustainability we know that uh, sustainability is really difficult to describe simply but we would like to uh, you know propose an idea of uh, responsible production. So uh, what is really sustainability? Uh, why use the term ladder to define something that is not ladder? This has not to do with sustainability. This has to do with the market communication. We do want to suggest some, uh, uh, some performances, some uh, image of prestige, such as uh, Gustavo said at the very beginning of the webinar, um, so, how to communicate all those uh, characteristics? Because we have to uh, keep in mind that consumers are interested, more and more interested, in having clear, transparent and true information in order to, uh, to make their informed choice in the market when they have to purchase some articles. So, this is really uh, very important for, for, for the market. Again, we said, how do we define sustainability? 
There is a, a new approach that has been introduced recently by the United Nations in the Agenda 2030, and it is the, um, the development of, of, of this strategy uh, led by 17 objectives, the sustainable development goals that are really ambitious and vary from a wide range of starting from no poverty, zero, zero hunger, until the one uh, that we are interested in, the responsible consumption and production. All those objectives are very interconnected and they aim, their aim is to protect the environment, to ensure people's well-being and to implement finally this model of responsible production and consumption at a global level. So this is really uh, the, the, the key message that we want to, to, to share. So, thinking about responsibility, have you ever thought uh, about the responsibility that, keep, that is, uh, the, that is con connected with ladder? Ladder is the perfect example of circular model. As we already said, it is a byproduct. Uh, they transformed in a durable material. And also, the waste of production of, uh, of tanning process become raw materials for other industry. And 99% of leather derives from, from, uh, the, from the food industry. So it is a very important percentage. This is, this is really the perfect implementation of circularity that everybody talks about. Okay, that, I would say even, even more because it's, a, it's an industrial symbiosis. Yeah, when you are, that's true. Actually, um, in, not currently because with the pandemic of the COVID, we, you, there, is, there is a lot of... Uh, um, dysfunctions in the market that have occurred, but normally uh, you, the, the leather industry, leather making is actually taking all the waste and so all these residues from the from meat production and transforming it into 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 leather into something that is very useful for the for the economy and for the society. Uh, so on one hand, you reduce the the need for um, using end of life um, um, measures for for these residues uh, and destroying them and, and, and trying to find a, a, an alternative way of uh, waste management. Uh, and in, on the other hand, you create something that is very useful for society, which eliminates, which can substitute and could, which can avoid the production of uh, plastic uh, that is the alternative for, for, for as a material that has been, that is taking place in, in, in many markets. And, uh, um, it's true, uh, leather is an environmentally friendly product because of it, this uh, symbiosis and because of, of all the, 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 the things that you can do also with the, with the byproducts of leather production and at the end of life of, of leather, leather. But uh, it's important to say that what uh, Maurizio has been indicating before, that for this to be true, it needs to be made by responsible tanneries. And uh, that, is, that is a very important uh, element because uh, what's, uh, what's the point if you have a, a, a very interesting symbiosis, industrial symbiosis, if the operators are not uh, uh, working responsibly? And here, of course, we can, we can give you, uh, recommend you to, to use European leather. That's what, uh, what I'm studying for. Yes, in fact, Gustavo, I didn't mention it in the, in the presentation, but when I say leather is an environmental friendly product and tanning process is more and more efficient, reducing the use of, uh, of resources such as water, chemical substances and, and, and energy, I refer specifically to the data coming from the Italian Sustainability Report and the European Sustainability Report. Those are the results of, of uh, the... the the efforts made by those tanning tanneries that are located in uh, in Europe that are uh, that believe strongly believe in the in the idea of uh, of uh, a responsible production model. Well, another key word that have been uh, uh, that have been uh, presented in this uh, in these days. Uh, of, uh, of virtual networking is respect. So responsibility, and we have already uh, seen uh, how it is uh, the responsibility connected to leather, but leather is also respect. Respect because leather supply chain invests 
in transparency, which gives uh, the consumer the guarantee of respect of ethical aspects such as the animal welfare, the ecosystem, and the local communities that are whose economy is based on specific niches of production of, uh, of leather. And moreover, leather is safe. It's a safe for workers, so it's safe in terms of uh, safety uh, in the environment of, uh, of production, but it's also safe for consumers because it's a safe product that does not contain concerning substances um, because there is a strict respect of the legislation, specifically in certain areas such as Europe. So this is really one of the um, one important characteristic that gives letter this, I, this, this, this um, characteristic of respect. Yes, no, let me, let me just say a word. I'm, I'm speaking too much, I know. No, no, it's, <laughs> you're welcome, Gustavo. <laughs> it's, uh, um, well, it's um, for, for saying that uh, cotons and uh, the Italian uh, tanneries and uh, all the, the French, the German, the, the, the UK tanneries have been working together uh, in, in a very, in very interesting pro uh, project uh, together with our social partners, uh, uh, trade unions at European level in order to produce a very interesting instrument that you can, down, that you can use at, uh, online. It's free, it's of course, it's, it's called the OIRA risk assessment for tanneries. So that is how a tannery, even if it is not a European one, in any part of the world, can use this tool in order to make a risk assessment of their operations in tanneries. And particularly, it's, it's very good for, for small and medium-sized enterprises. That, that work in the leather business and that is that gives you um, as a tanner a clear idea about where the risks are and how you can prevent any any risk that's that's a, a, a something that the european leather industry has produced not only for using it themselves but also for giving it to the world as a as a as a, as a gift in order to improve the production of leather in the rest of the world uh, that's on, on one hand, and then on, on the on the aspect of the safety of of leather is, um, well, Europe has been the first market that has developed such a stringent legislation that has been the, the, the is the reach legislation. Well, reach is is really one of the most uh, uh, stringent legislation that you can imagine which sets uh, requirements for the products that are put on the market and for for uh, in terms of the substance composition and which substances can be used for producing and which substances should be should not be present in the product and that is why uh, we can say that in leather from europe is absolutely safe because you you cannot use certain substances that that are restricted or that are banned and on the other hand uh, it is produced in a, in a in a way that avoids any risk also to the people in the, in, in, that are working it, that are developing, that are producing the, the material, but also for consumers. That's it. Okay, we we are approaching the the, the, the end of the of the presentation. Um, what uh, will be the fashion after this crisis that we have been facing in the last months? There are some emerging trends that were also present before, but now they are accelerating uh, as uh, every period of, of global crisis. Uh, the focus will be on sustainability, on quality, on durability, and on the, the two keywords that we have, uh, they have mentioned, responsibility and, and respect. So the recovery, uh, it is quite, uh, uh, it's quite the message that we are listening to in this in these days that the recovery will define sustainability as a key priority more than in the past and that the consumers believe that the companies have a responsibility to address all those issues the environmental protection and the social aspects of, of production so we can conclude with this <laughs> with this famous quote by vivian westwood which is well known and that it's the, the, the summary in, in very few words of all that we have uh, said before. So buy less, choose well, make it less, and choose quality, not, not quantity. 
So we are open to the, the question that can arise from the, from the floor and uh, we hope you, you appreciated the, the presentation. In any case, we are here for your, for your doubts and use the, the, the question and answer function of, of the Zoom conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Let's see if, if there are some questions or if everything is clear. I've opened the, the question and answer box, but uh, so far I don't see any, so far, any questions. It's, uh, any questions? Was it clear or was it too annoying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, some questions are, are, are arising. Yes, Osman is saying hello to us. Hello. Uh, yes. Don't don't hesitate. Type in your question, and uh, is the information available online? Uh, um, do you mean uh, do you mean the presentation? If you mean the if you mean the presentation, I am quite sure that it will be available online in the next days. Uh, yes, it would be it would be available uh, as a, as registration online. Yes. And if you mean uh, the the information about the sector, you can you can find information about the sector both in the uh, cotons in the euroleather.com website and also on the for I suppose uh, that uh, uh, also for you it is the same case in Italy for in unich.it or lineapelle.com, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, in the next days, I think that we will share the uh, the link where to uh, where to to see again the registration. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, okay. Some questions are arising. What about the use of bioletter term? I mean, in essence, all leather is treated with some form of chemical, right? Yes, yes. Bio leather term, it, it can be used with no problem if it refers to authentic leather. I think that the, the, the principle that we have uh, mentioned is, uh, is always uh, valid. So leather, the term leather can be used only if uh, uh, it is a uh, an animal origin product with the characteristics that we have described. Mm, confusing and misleading. Is it confusing and misleading? It depends on what, you, what is the product that is uh, described with this, uh, with this uh, term, bioladder. What does bioladder is supposed to mean for you? Well, it's a it's a bio leather. I mean, I don't think, well, leather is a biological product. Yeah, it is an organic material, and therefore it is a, per se a, a biological uh, material. So it does not add anything. It is not it is not wrong if you say bio leather, but uh, I don't think that uh, it may be a little bit confusing because you 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 would have. Uh, uh, to to explain why you mention why you say bio leather that's that's the I think it would be it would be a little bit confusing not misleading mm. but confusing yeah anything else because I, it because really I, I don't understand why you use bio because it has to do with the substances that are used to to produce this kind of leather well maybe maybe uh, Osman means uh, that. Um, he wants to, to, to make it uh, similar to biological or organic production in, in the, in the Anglo-Saxon world. You, you, you speak rather than of organic product, organic production, organic agriculture and organic uh, uh, products. Um, and uh, and in, in, on the continent, you, you speak more about bio, bio, bio product. But, um, and then, of course, for organic production, you have to respect a number of... Uh, of principles and rules, uh, and not use any any type of chemistry or pesticides, etc., for the agriculture. But uh, um, there is, as far as I, as as I know, no uh, protocol for uh, any 
uh, biological or, or organic uh, uh, leather production. So that is, uh, there is, uh, to my understanding, nothing that exists so far. So it should be created. It could be created, of course. Mm. Yes. I am reading uh, through the other the other uh, question and I see this one. Are there terms you are aware of that for you both credibly describes vegan apple cactus ladder in brackets to avoid confusion? Mm, well, I think that to avoid confusion, again, it should be avoided to use ladder and it should, well, it is a matter of creativity also. Well, why not uh, uh, inventing uh, uh, a brand new term to describe such new uh, material so um, this is uh, this is the, the the best way to avoid confusion i think don't you think gustavo absolutely no I, I, there is one one element that is important first uh, uh, what uh, have we have you have seen in the in the presentation that um, why using the term leather to describe a product that is not leather. And that is the first question that we one should ask. Uh, it's of course because leather has this uh, uh, sense or it gives this uh, impression of uh, luxury, of uh, beauty, that, uh, that of course these alternative materials want to emulate and want to use. Um, however, it is important that for, for these materials to start uh, uh, changing the chip in the sense that, uh, well, transparency becomes more and more important for the market, more and more important for consumers. By using a terminology that is not disclosing really the content of the, or the, the, the material composition of a product, you are not going in the direction of uh, uh, transparency, which is uh, actually what the market requires. And that is on top of the, of the misleading character of uh, using the term leather. So it would be much better to say, well, uh, I know that uh, cactus, it's cactu, cactus leaves. Or, so why don't you, say, you speak about cactus leaves? Uh, or with pineapple, the same. It's, it's, not, it's not the pineapple, but it's actually the leaf of the pineapple that is, that is used for, for making this material. So uh, better to use the real terms and real description of the product rather than to use uh, some uh, terms that are first misleading which is uh, which can be a legal risk and secondly that are not uh, really transparent with regard to the market that's my advice for for all these products yes we have a very interesting question here can you share the process to get leather terminology in other countries <laughs> well that's really <laughs> That's really difficult to answer. No, well, it's, it's not so difficult at all because uh, well, actually, actually, you 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 are you are quite right, uh, Sentil, uh, because uh, um, when the European Union engages with countries in uh, in EU aid, like US aid, so you have a lot of support activities with with the, with the, uh, the third countries, uh, uh, you can obtain also support from the European Union for uh, implementing administrative and, and le legal Im uh, improvements. And uh, well, I would not uh, um, hesitate to ask the government to get into contact with, uh, uh, with the European Union and ask whether the, it is possible to obtain some type of help, some type of support for implementing in, the, in, in your market also some uh, mechanisms for protecting the term leather and for making sure that uh, the the market is protected from misleading advertisement or 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 products that are not uh, really disclosing their content yeah well gustavo yes the the the, the answer is simple no you you have to contact uh, definitely you have to to keep in touch with the national authorities what is difficult is what it comes after you have contacted the authorities because it's not really a, a, an easy an easy process to to develop but it is well the path that it has to be followed it is definitely to to contact authorities and to let them understand how such a, a, a legislative development can be useful 
for the market, for the consumers, and for everyone, definitely, because transparency is really uh, something that is beneficial for everyone, I think. Um, There's another I've, one here from Stefan yeah? Ricovoni. I have heard yes. of lab grown leather from collagen cells being developed. If it was from animal collagen cells, could it be called leather? Well, that was a discussion that we have had at international level, whether this could be called leather. Um, you know, the definition of leather is very clear. If you have, if it is of animal origin, if it has its original fibrous structure, if it comes from, a, from an animal hide, then it is leather. So I, I would be uh, uh, skeptic to, to call it leather if it is grown in a lab, because it is not the hide of an animal. It's not the skin of an animal. Now, uh, of course, if it then reproduces exactly the fibrous structure of a hide or skin, then we would have a, a, a possibility to consider it as leather because uh, actually what makes the fibrous structure of a skin is actually the DNA. And if this DNA is also reproduced uh, 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 synthetically or, or uh, artificially in a in a lab, so uh, it may. It, there, the discussion is still on. The debate is still going on at the international level. It's a very good question, but uh, we still cannot say it definitively because we don't have. We have not seen yet any lab-grown leather that has the original fiber structure of a of a skin. But uh, but it's an interesting question. Really interesting. Yeah. Oh, here I have a, a, an interesting comment by Sabrina, Sabrina Frontini, which is the uh, director of ICEC, the Italian Certification Institute, that uh, reminds us that uh, there is an Italian standard that defines um, what is eco leather. So it has to be uh, an authentic leather that it can be measured in terms of environmental performances with the product environmental footprint. And this is very important that we, uh, we didn't mention it uh, during the, the presentation. Absolutely, Sabrina, you are fully, fully right. It's, a, it's, an, it's an important uh, standard because it's, uh, it's basically, um, we, we have to say also that Ecoleda exists in many countries, but it's in Italy where it has, it has been most expanded. So, uh, it was uh, also Italy who has uh, developed this standard in order to say, no, well, eco leather is a, a leather that is produced with a low, low environmental impact. And there is a protocol that establishes, a specification that establishes what eco leather is. That is an additional element for uh, um, fighting, for challenging the, the, when the term eco leather is used by materials that are not made out of uh, leather. And uh, therefore, uh, leather can this this standard can then be used for uh, 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 making the point for arguing in court cases or in any other uh, forum that uh, um, this synthetic material is not really is misleading or uh, is using a misleading um, uh, term. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm trying to read. And Simon, and you, yeah, I was reading this. The issue is direct competition in the form of an alternative. Well, the issue is not the direct competition, but uh, the unfair competition of some products that are uh, advertised as, uh, as uh, eco-friendly when it is not really it's not probably the case or it is not the case due to the fact that they are an alternative to leather or uh, the fact that they seem to have some characteristics that they in intrinsically don't have and um, most of the time consumers that, that try to to buy some some articles uh, i mean shoes uh, uh, bags they are not really able to they are not they have not a technical uh, background to uh, to really understand sometimes uh, the the, the real composition. 
So um, I think that uh, it's not really a matter of direct competition. Uh, direct competition is really welcome. Uh, it is unfair competition that uh, has to be avoided, but for, uh, for the market in general. Let me add something, Maurizio, too. It's a very interesting question. Yeah. Uh, is it competition or is it not competition? Of course, it is a competing material. But uh, uh, the market is so wide, so, yeah. big, so large, uh, that uh, uh, actually there is not enough leather for satisfying all the demand for, for, uh, for, for materials uh, that are used in, in, in clothing, in, furniture, in, in upholstery, in, in all these uses. So welcome, these are, it's, it's, it's a welcome competition, but for being welcome, it must be fair. And that is uh, where we have, a, we have a problem because we are, we are being challenged with uh, some materials that are uh, describing themselves as better than leather, which is, not, which is not correct. And so we need to be very, very careful for the use of the term leather on one hand, and secondly, for the description of uh, these products that are using the term leather, uh, n challenging the, uh, the, the, the material and saying that their alternative is better than leather. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of confusing and con contradiction and therefore we must be very careful. But it's a, it's a competition, welcome competition if it, if it is fair. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree, Gustavo. One more question by Ostman. Mm -hmm. What is, in your opinion, the best form of leather in the production of shoes to make it more sustainable? Just chromium free or are there other forms of sustainable leathers we are not aware of? Well, oh, that's... That is, the, that is the, <laughs> the, the question that comes always up. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is not that chromium free is more sustainable that, that uh, chromium than, than mineral tan, mineral tan leather. Or sometimes it, it is the same question that arises uh, talking about uh, vegetable tanned leather. It is not that because it is vegetable tanned leather that it's more sustainable. Uh, again, uh, my answer is, is we have to consider uh, the whole process uh, so that there is a, a responsible process in all the, in all the main aspects that are environment, that are social aspects, uh, it's, it's really not uh, uh, just a matter of uh, which chemical substance you use uh, in order to, to, to produce leather. We can say that there is a, a standard way to measure the, the impact that can be used. I don't know if this can be a satisfying uh, answer to use the approach of, of life cycle assessment, or the, the, the approach of, uh, of, uh, of the PEF, the product environment, the, the product category rules. But anyway, definitely my answer is not, uh, is not that uh, there is a chromium free leather which is sustainable and the other leather are not sustainable. Just for, for, for making a full yeah about this to say that there are three three basic types of uh, of tanning so it's chrome tanning uh, uh, mineral tanning excuse me and chrome tanning is the most important of that uh, vegetable tanning which is uh, uh, using the barks or fruits from 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 leaves uh, to tan the, the the material or synthetic tanning which is using synthetic uh, uh, produced materials for uh, substances for for making for making leather, and uh, um, Maurizia said it. If you if you use a life cycle approach, you will see that uh, there is no there is no one which is better than the other. There are some have advantages in certain areas, and others have advantages in other areas. So uh, there are there are up to sixteen impact categories that should be measured in a in the product environmental footprint, and uh, in some cases, vegetable, vegetable tanned leather is, uh, has a better uh, ranking. And in others, it's the chrome tanned leather that has a better ranking. And in others, again, the synthetic leather. So it, it is, they are all equivalent. There is no one which is better than the other. That is a, a very global comment, a very general comment, of course. But you need to, to think about what is the use that I'm going to be making of the leather. That is the important factor because for certain uh, articles you are going to have 
the need to have a, a very wide chromatic uh, uh, variety. So then it may be better to use chrome tanned leather. For others, you need that it is the material is sturdy and resistant. Then maybe you you may need uh, to have a, a, a vegetable tanned leather. And in other cases, you you would have you will look for properties and uh, um, characteristics that the synthetic uh, tanning provides to the material. But there is no one size fit, fits all. Yeah. So I think that we have finished to answer all the questions. So I think that we can close the meeting for any other doubts uh, you, I can tell you that you can try to keep in contact with us and if we can, we can, if we can answer, we will be glad to do it. Okay. Right. Visit euroleather.com for any yes. further information or I suppose Linea Pelle and- Yes, uh, Linea Pelle and Unique website. Yeah. So uh, let me say thank you all for, uh, for uh, having attended the, the webinar and uh, have a nice evening and uh, enjoy the rest of the, of the events that are in program for the, for the incoming days. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.